Hello and welcome all. You may please be seated. There. Good. I'm glad you brought us together tonight. Thanks for getting married. <laughs> it is a great honor to be up here and to help usher in the next chapter of your life together. But it begins this evening. You have loved one another for some time now. <laughs> and together made this decision of commitment. And tonight, embark on a wonderful journey with one another ever after. And on this, the last day of summer, you are joined by witnesses of the greatest kind. Whether you have traveled near or far, know that your presence is marked in the hearts of the beloved. You're all near and dear to Eric and Jenna. You're the special people in their lives. And surely cherish them as I heard. The love of this room is radiant. And it is the self same love which imbues this ceremony with such significance. For there is no wedding without witnesses. And two, we will all always be there to support you, the bride and groom, in times of need as well as those of jubilation, such as these. Um, and again, I'd like to thank everyone for being here tonight. <laughs> Obviously, we <laughs> will. Um, this is typically the part of the ceremony where you read the poem. Uh, and I thought this would be full of good and practical advice for the newlyweds. Um, we have a poem by Shel Silver James called My Ghouls. <laughs> if you want to marry me, here's what you'll have to do. You must learn how to make a perfect chicken dumpling stew. And you must sew my holy socks and soothe my troubled mind and develop the knack for scratching my back and keep my shoes spotlessly shining. <laughs> and while I rest, you must break up the leaves. And when it is hailing and snowing, you must shovel the walk and be still when I walk. And hey, where are you going? <laughs> Don't do any of them. <laughs> what I'd really like to read is another poem by Shel Silverich Dean, uh, which you may be more familiar with. Where the sidewalk ends. There is a place where the sidewalk ends, and before the street begins, and there the grass grows soft and white, and there the sun burns crimson bright. And there the moon bird rests from his flight, the cool and the peppermint wind. Let us leave this place where the smoke blows black and the dark street winds and bends, past the pits where the asphalt flowers grow. We shall walk with a walk that is measured and slow, and watch where the chalk white arrows go to the place where the sidewalk is. Yes, We'll walk with a walk that is measured and slow, and we'll go where the chalk white arrows go, where the children they mark and the children they know, the place where the sidewalk is. Um, and this brings me to the hardest part of the service, I think, personally, where I'm supposed to speak about my relationship with Jenna and Eric and their both. <laughs> very dear to me, and I love them very much, and I'm sure you do as well, um, that I read this poem um, in part because I think it speaks to the beauty of your relationship together, and that you're both passionate dreamers, 
and stewards of one another who are the champions of them. Whether that means uh, hosting an itinerant Estonian crime syndicate, for lack of a better word. Or buying a camper just to get away in your own backyard. <laughs> Taking a turtle for walks or converting a shower to a spray up. I've, I've seen it all and I've seen what you guys do for one another in these books. It's a really beautiful thing. Um, if I, well, I'll try to keep me But it's such a joy and an honor to be involved, and especially to be up here. Thank you for that. And so this brings us to the heart of the ceremony tonight, uh, the ceremony proper. And on the one hand, leaving today, everything will be exactly the same as when you walked in. You'll be the same marriage, you'll be the same dinner. And the self-same love, passion, and exuberance for life which brought you here will carry on into tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow. And yet, somehow, everything too will have transformed, as if by magic. More than a couple happily in love, you will be instead legally married. <laughs> you will have made vows to one another to uphold and cherish their loving trust and fear and witness of those who know and love you them. Please take one another's hands. <laughs> From the time you first met, to when you first fell in love, to when you decided to wed, these moments have led you to here. Good night. I now ask for your consent to this union. Eric, do you take Jenna to be your lawfully wedded wife? I do. And Jenna, do you take Eric to be your lawfully wedded husband? We have consented to the sacred bond of marriage. I now ask you to exchange your vows and to etch the promises into your heart. Thank you. <laughs> it's not that long. <laughs> <laughs> When I first met you in the chaos of academia, in rooms full of voices arguing about meaning, how to dissect value, what is truth, I fell in love with you, working beside you, in sculpture and friend making. The smell of fresh cut wood and welded metal. I fell in love with you, sharing music with you in the shop, dancing with you after exhibitions and performances that we planned, dancing with you in the way that things felt crushing, and dancing with you in spring return. I fell in love with you, feeling our house and body shape as the freight train rolled through the town the dead of night, massive air horn fading slowly in and slowly out. I fought with you, and I've fallen in love with you, and I fought with you, and I've fallen back in love with you. In the hot storms and downpours of rain, sitting together under thunder and lightning, on hikes through the Wichita's, trees and creeks, under all types of skies. I promise to love you freely, fully, and as you are, <clears throat> not as I want you to be. To show this love through my actions, <clears throat> from communication, big and small, I promise to act with intention in our life. <clears throat> and while embracing the unpredictable, 
work with you towards the best future we can imagine. If you would have told me 20 years ago that I'd be living in Norman, Oklahoma with a yard full of sunflowers, a pet turtle, this amazing man by my side, and a print shop of our own, I don't know if I would have believed you. But I think deep down I would have been pretty thrilled about it. A few days ago, I was in the camper reading and heard something familiar. I looked up to watch you call all the birds to the yard with the sound of a dove call. <laughs> you helped me realize how much fun it is to feed the birds, to plant seeds, and to climb mountains. You helped me see the magic in the world and embrace the unknown. I love what we've created together, the language we've molded, the business we've built, the projects, performances, parades, art spaces, exhibitions, tours, festivals, the adventures we've gone on, the home we share, and the incredible community we've grown to be a part of. Over the past decade, we've grown quite a bit, and we've seen some shit. <laughs> but I don't think I could have picked a better human to join me on this journey. You've shown me that no matter what life throws at us, we will face it together. You have a drive and a willingness to find a way no matter how impossible a task may seem. And your lust for life always keeps me on my toes. You've shown me that love is not something that can be approached casually. That to truly love, one must let down all barriers and dive fully into its divine power. Full honesty, vulnerability, and full commitment, fully submerged. You're someone who loves me unconditionally, respects me as an equal individual, and values the things that are important to me. I will always do the same for you. We are not perfect, and we have our disagreements, but I will always try my best to listen, to better communicate, and to work with you through those difficulties. I ask that you do the same for me. I will continually work to better myself and enable you to do the same through encouragement, support, and understanding. And just as you've been there with me over the past 11 years, in both my highest and lowest moments, I look forward to being there with you no matter what comes our way. We have now made vows to one another, which will act as a foundation in the marriage you begin building together now tonight. We have witnessed as much and extend our collective blessing. And now, we're in. May these serve as a physical representation of what we consecrate in spirit, the sanctity of your marriage, and a constant symbol of your love. Please repeat after me. All that I am, I give to you. All that I am, I give to you. All that I have, I share with you. All that I have, I share with you. All that I am, I give to you. All that I am, I give to you. All that I have, I share with you. All that I have, I share with you.
You have made promises to one another, and you have given your consent in marriage. Here in the company of friends and family, blessed and endowed by the love which binds us, you are now joined in this most sacred commitment of matrimony. May you both be blessed with all possible love, health, happiness, and prosperity. May you always support and cherish one another, and may your hearts every day grow as you walk with a walk. That is measured and slow. By the power vested in me, by the state of Oklahoma, <laughs> and the internet, I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. <laughs> Mary Tuck. 